I'm not sure if you knew this or not, but there have been times in our history where we humans have been wrong. In season two, we told you the story about how Mother Nature paved the consequences for a very disruptive human decision. But one furry innovation pawed its way back to undisrupt the disruption. Correspondent Adam Yamaguchi traveled to Yellowstone National Park to meet wildlife biologist Doug Smith and learn how eradicating the park's apex predator, the wolf, negatively altered its natural ecosystem. Good to see you. Good to see you. Well, let's take a look at the screen. The Henry Ford's curator of agriculture and the environment, Deborah Reed, joined me to discuss the impact of what was done to reverse course. How long have wolves been here? Well, wolves have been here since the last glacier. Park was established in 1872, and a natural wolf population was here then. Park administrators decided that predators were bad and tried to kill off the wolves, and they were pretty much successful. The killing of predators caused this place to change pretty dramatically ecologically. When the wolves were removed, the elk population skyrocketed, and all those elk needed a lot of food, taking away the food supply for other animals. The streams actually changed and we lost a certain kind of habitat. Like a falling row of dominoes, taking away wolves caused all kinds of ripple effects in Yellowstone. So 1991, Congress approved the funds for an incredible recovery project that was implemented in 1995. We actually went to Canada, caught wolves, and released them into Yellowstone. And that's had a huge impact on the ecology. Both the eradication of the wolves and their reintroduction were disruptive, but in very different ways. Natural harmony and human harmony often are discordant. Would you say this story has a happy ending? Well, for the wolves, there are more than 500 wolves in the Yellowstone Park ecosystem, and the habitat is coming back, as we heard clearly. We hear that our environment has a delicate balance but then also we see how resilient it can be. Which is it? Oh, resilient. Yes, we have to always come down on the side of resilience. But it takes cooperation, and often it takes giving or sacrificing some aspect of that human nature to ensure natural harmony. We hear so much about loss of habitat, loss of species. It's so nice to hear a story where the process was reversed. That Yellowstone project is a great model, and it can continue to thrive where it is. Hopefully others will see it as a model and take the next step forward in other places where habitat can be restored. Humans are capable of wrecking stuff, but also fixing stuff. Yes.